Hello guys. So today we will talk about how to implement linear regression using linear learner algorithm, which is an inbuilt algorithm in AWS HMECA. So linear models are supervised learning algorithms are used for solving either classification or regression problem. The Amazon SageMaker linear learner algorithm provides a solution for both classification and regression problem. It means uh, we can use linear learner algorithm either for classification or for regression. With the SageMaker algorithm, you can simultaneously explore different training objectives and choose the best solution from a validation set. The linear learning algorithm requires a data matrix with rows representing the observation, means samples, and a column representing the dimensions of the features. It also requires an additional column that contains the labels that match the data point. We will see in a while how to prepare the uh, input and output data right, for this algorithm. Next, we have columns, uh, column types solved by linear learner so uh, we can use uh, we can solve a binary classification problem or we can solve a multi-class classification or we can also solve a regression problem using this algorithm linear learner so in the case of logistic regression means uh, uh, we can solve the problem binary classification in which we will have uh, two classes yes or no true or false or zero or one the example Maybe here is this email spam or not. Means so we can solve our email spam classification problem with the help of linear, linear learning algorithm. Another example maybe here is this transaction fraudulent or not. Next example, uh, there might be is crime likely or not. So these are the examples of binary classification where we have two classes only. Next, we can also solve here multi-class classification where we will have more than two classes. For example, is this item a book, movie, or toy? Another example maybe is this animal, a dog, bird, or cat. Right? So we can also solve multi-class classification using linear learner. Next, we can solve here regression problem also, where, uh, where we have to predict a continuous value in the output. Hey, uh, for example, uh, if you want to predict the sales of a company, right? so in that example, uh, we have to predict the continuous value as a sales in the output. Another example, maybe a house price prediction, right? where we have to predict the price as a continuous value in the output. Right? So using linear learner we can solve binary classification problem we can solve multi-class classification problem or we can solve regression problem next input and output interface for the linear learner algorithm for training the linear learner algorithm support both record io depth protobuf and csp format okay so this record io means this record uh, uh input output is a kind of uh or we can say a, a type of data type, right? So we have to uh, store our data into this format, right? And uh, for the record IO uh, protobuf input type, only float 32 tensor are supported. And for the text CSV input type, the first column is assumed to be the target column, right? So here we have two options. Hey, the, first, uh, the first option is we can convert our data into this format record input output right or another option we have we can use a csv file but if we use csv file the first column must be a target column and for the inference the linear learner algorithm supports the application slash json x record io proto above and csv format also so when you make prediction on new data the format of the response depends on the type of the model means uh, if you use uh, regression models, we will get the continuous output. And if you use uh, binary classification models, we will get uh, two output. Okay. And if we use uh, uh, model for the multi-class classification problem, right? so in that case, the number of classes must be three. So, so before using this model, 
uh, we have to convert our input data into a specific format that is required by linear learner algorithm. Next, uh, we have some hyperparameters right, uh, that we have to set while, con uh, while uh, configure a training job. So you can see the hyperparameters, the first is predicted type, means here we have to mention uh, uh, whether we want to solve a binary classification problem or we want to solve a multi-class classification problem or we want to solve a regression problem. So here we have to pass a, either a binary classifier or a multi-class classifier or a regression. Suppose if we have regression problem, so we have to set the regressor right, for this highway parameter predictor type. Next, we can set the epochs the number of passes over the training data, a positive integer with the default value being 15. The default value is 15 means if we don't pass any value for this epoch, so the default value 15 will be used here. Next is feature dimension, means the number of features. Suppose if we have uh, uh, 10 features in our data, so we have to pass that 10. Next is Li, means so here we can use uh, L1 regularization value, right? Or default, or, or in the case of default, uh, auto or non negative. Number. Then WD means L2 regularization value. Optimizer means uh, optimization algorithm. So there are many optimization algorithms in machine learning, like uh, gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent, like right? or ADAM. Right, and many others. So here we can also choose the optimization algorithm. Next, we have here learning rate. Learning rate uh, decides uh, how quickly we want to reach at the minimum value of the loss function. Right, so here we can just set the learning rate. Loss function. So loss function depends on the model type that we are going to use. Right, uh, suppose. Uh, uh, if we are going to use a regressor model here. So here we can use a mean squared error or we can use a mean absolute error. Right? But uh, if we use here a uh, binary classifier, so we can use here a logistic. Right? So loss function depends on the model type. Next is uh, mini batch size. So here we can mention the uh, number of samples and that we want to feed into the training in the form of batches and the default value is thousand here next is number of models so linear learner trains multiple models in parallel so this allow you to set the number of models trained and compare against each other so these are the some uh, important hyperparameters that we can use while conferring a uh, training job. Okay, so here, uh, if you want to see the official documentation of this algorithm, you can search here linear learner AWS SageMaker. You can open this first link, and here you will find the detailed documentation about this algorithm. You can see the interface. See, in the case of binary classification, right, the predicted label may be 0 or 1. And a score is a single float number, indicate how strongly the algorithm believes that label should be 1. In the case of multi-class classification, the predicted class will be an integer from 0 to number of classes minus 1. Means so if we have 10 classes in our data, right, so the class will be start from 0, 0 to number of classes minus one means 10 minus one nine and the score will be a list of of uh, one floating point number per class means here we will get the uh, predicted value corresponding to each class and here you can see this uh, this algorithm also supports cpu and gpu instance for training and inference here we have some examples Okay, and if we talk about hyperparameters, you can see number of classes, predictor type. So either we can pass a binary classifier, a binary classification column, 
or we can pass a multi class classifier from uh, to solve the multi class classification problem or to solve the regression we can pass a regression we also have some others which uh, these are the main right that we have just seen okay and here you can see we also have some other algorithms like knn right or light uh, gbm right and uh, okay and uh, we also have algorithm here like sg boost right so we also have uh, some other algorithms that are inbuilt in this aws sh maker okay now let's see how we can implement linear learner so first i need to start my uh, sage maker instance so let's uh, create a sage maker notebook instance so currently there is no notebook instance uh, let's create it first we have to pass some name here so let's pass here my first my first code and here we will use uh, notebook instance type t3 medium okay and here we can also check uh, what instance type we can use and uh, under the free tab uh, aws free tab so in the case of sage maker you can see uh, 250 hours per month of ml t3 medium on studio notebooks right or uh, 250 hours per month on t2 medium or t3 medium on demand notebook instances right so if we create a notebook instance so here either we can use a t3 medium or we can use t2 medium right okay and for training purpose uh, okay and uh, here we can use 25 hours per month on ml.m5.4x large on sage maker data wrangler means if you want to perform here data pre-processing using uh sage maker so you can use m5.4x large similarly for the uh, feature storing you can use and here the, okay and the main thing is for the training purpose you can use m4x large or m5.x large and for the instance okay and for the inference purpose you can use either m4x large or m5.x large okay so these are the instance type that comes under theta right if you use something else right so uh, we have to pay some extra amount right it depends on the number of hours we use it so here we will use the default one m1 uh, ml.t3.medium we will use default here none okay and uh, rest of the value here i'm uh, i will use as default okay and let's click on create notebook instance so if you don't want to pay any uh, extra charge right so once you are done uh, then uh, after Im immediately uh, stop and delete your no your notebook instance right okay another thing now let's create a bucket here here we want to create a bucket in s3 because here we want to store our train and test data into this bucket right and okay and also we will store our train model here so currently you can see there is no bucket you can see there is no bucket now let's create a bucket here for our data so bucket name is uh, let's take here housing housing data demo the reason is this one and rest of the value we will use as default it is okay and uh, then click on this create bucket inside this bucket we will create a folder my data and uh, so here you can take any folder name and then create folder 
and here I'm going to take uh, create another folder to save my trend model. So here we can take folder name saved model. Okay, it will take few time. Meanwhile, here you can see uh, what uh, algorithms we have in AWS SageMaker. So we can search here built-in algorithm in SageMaker. There are also some pre-trained model. You can see this CAD boost, factorization machine, KNN, linear learner, XG boost. Okay? And we also have for the algorithm for the text data. And here we have also a model for the time series. We also have models for unsupervised. And we also have model for computer vision. Okay. okay. Now we can just click on this open Jupyter. Okay. If we click on this linear learner. So with the help of this algorithm, we can solve classification and regression problem. So both problems we can solve with the help of linear learner. For input, we have to pass label where X is a high dimension vector, Y is a numeric label. For binary classification, label must be either zero or one. For multi-class classification, label must be from zero to number of classes minus one. And for the regression problems, Y is a real number. So Amazon SageMaker Linear then provides a solution for both classification and regression problems. Okay, uh, to learn about more Amazon Proto Book Record class, how to prepare work data. So here you can see, uh, this is a link where you can learn how to prepare your input data, right, in the format of Proto Book Record. Okay, and these are the hyperparameters here. You can see a uh, predictor type, you can use binary classifier, multi-class classifier, and regression. Instance type you can use, and number of EC2 instances to use for training. Okay. Now let's uh, upload a file. We want to use first one, housing regression. Okay, and also we want to load our data and open this Jupyter notebook file. Okay, so first we will import some necessary libraries here, import pandas. So pandas are basically views for data analysis, numpy, numpy views to deal with n dimension arrays, seaborn views for data visualization, matplotlib also used for data visualization, but the difference is that uh, seaborn are basically used for uh, uh, we can say for a uh, statical graphical purpose, right? If you want to just visualize the uh, some uh, statical information about your data, right? So in that case, uh, Seaborn will be a good choice. Here. Next, we have this uh, Boto3. So uh, this is a Python SDK for AWS. So with the help of this library, we can, uh, we can access the AWS services like uh, uh, S3, EC2, right, with the help of Python script. Then we have uh, also a Python library here, SageMaker. So we have this file, Boston underscore data.csv. In this file, we have data. So with the help of this function, read underscore CSV, we can read the data and we'll get the data as the data frame. df.head means uh, using this method. The, uh, here we want to display a first five record. So here uh, we have data in the form of CSV. It means uh, we have to set the first column as a target label, right? In our input data, the first column will be here, target column. So these are the columns. And, uh, and here in this file, the target column is this one, MEDV, right? The target column is uh, MEDV, means, uh, uh, the median value, right? Means the price, right? Corresponding to each house. Next here, uh, we have to set the target column, this one, median value as the first column. So what we can do here? 
So here uh, we can perform a concatenation between this column, right, and rest of the columns. So df uh, then uh, square bracket, and we can pass the column name, right, that we want to set at the first as the first column, and then we can just drop this column because here we want to also pass the rest of the columns, and x is equal to one because here we want to perform concatenation column wise. Now you can see this is our first column. Right. Next, you can check the shape, the entire split. So here uh, we want to split the data. We can pass the panel data, comma test size. Next, we will save our data. So now we have data into these two variables. So here we have training data, here we have validation data. But here we have data as the data frame. You can see if we display on uh, this variable training, data set so here we are getting a data frame right so these are the samples that we have in training so if you want to save this data into a csv file we can use two csv function we can use two csv function right so training underscore data set which is a data frame here right or in the data frame we have a method two csv right so the data we can save into a csv file the train underscore data or csv this is the name of the file index equal to false means uh we don't want to save the indexing into the csv file right otherwise we will get a new column right and uh, and in that column we will get the indexing so if we don't want to save the indexing we can set index equal to false and also uh, we don't want to save the column names so we can pass header equal to false the same thing we can do for the test data or for the validation data right so data set uh, this data frame dot two csv then file name index equal to false header equal to none we run this so here you can see so now here we have got uh, these two csv file into our directory where we have uh, this Jupyter notebook file train data dot csv valid data dot csv now we have to upload this to file into the s3 bucket right we have to upload that files into this bucket right and the bucket name is this one housing data demo so how we can upload data set into s3 bucket so first we can create a session here so SageMaker dot session class, and we can call method here upload data. So, so this session object dot upload data. First, we can pass the file name that we want to upload, then the bucket name housing data demo. You can see the bucket name is housing data demo. Housing data demo. Right? Okay, and the key prefix means the folder. So here, uh, okay, uh, in this bucket housing data demo, we want to save this file into this subfolder, right? So here, uh, uh, key prefix means subfolder. You can see here we have a subfolder, my data, right? So we want to save both files here. Okay. So whenever we use this method upload data, so basically uh, we will get the path. You can see the training path is S3 bucket name, then subfolder name, then file name. Similarly, uh, we can upload training data into the S3 bucket. Right, so session dot upload data, file name, bucket name, and subfolder. If you run this, right, so this is the path for our validation data CSV file. And here we have path for training data CSV file. And here you can see into this folder. So just uh, refresh this. And let's go inside this my data. You can see here we have got two files traindata.csv and validdata.csv. Okay. So now we have successfully uploaded our data into S3 bucket. Next, uh, we will configure our training job. So each algorithm. In AWS SageMaker, we have as a container image, right? We have a we have as a container image. 
So all the images we have into this, uh, you can say uh, some module, uh, image underscore URIs. We will import this first. And if you want to get some more information about this, so just copy this and paste it here. You can see image URIs. You can see ret uh, retrieve the ECI URI for the Docker image. Means each algorithm we have as a Docker image. You can see functioning for generating ECI image URI for pre-built SageMaker Docker images. Okay, so here we want to retrieve this Docker image linear learner. And here we have to mention the reason. So region we can access with the help of this line but about to three dot session dot region name next here uh, we have to create a variable for the output location means uh, where uh, where we want to save our model so here uh, this is the bucket name this is a prefix means a subfolder name and this is the location s3 then bucket name then subfolder name then output Okay, so our model will be uploaded into this S3 location. Next, here uh, we will uh, set the hyperparameters here. So SageMaker dot estimator dot estimator container. So here uh, container where will we have this one, and then role. And here you can see. Uh, Okay. The role means an AWS IAM role and the Amazon SageMaker training jobs and API that create SageMaker endpoints use this role to access training data and model ar ar artifact. So basically this uh, role we use to access the training data and model artifacts. Okay. So role equal to SageMaker dot get execution role. Yeah, let's run this line and let's see what will the output here. We run this. So we are getting, uh, okay, here you can see Amazon SageMaker, this execution rule, right? Okay, and this rule we have just set while creating a bucket, right? So, uh, okay, and then number of instance count equal to one and this instance type ml.m4.xlarge then output location and the object of SageMaker session. Next we have to define a training input and validation input channel. Means here uh, we have to uh, you know uh, create a channel here for our models. So SageMaker.training input and here we can pass the S3 data. So we have data at this path training input path and the content type is text slash csv similarly we can create a channel for our validation data here we have to just pass the the validation file path it means valid input path and the content type is same now these two variables we can pass here so linear dot set hyperparameters here you can see in the predictor type Regressor because this is a regression problem. Batch size is 20. Number of epochs is 5. Number of models we want to use here 10. Loss is absolute loss. Right. And you can also uh, play around uh, with these hyperparameters. Means you can also uh, just uh, change the value. Right. So you can try with different values and you will get the different result here. Okay. Next, uh, we can call fit method. So we can pass our train data, training data channel, this one. And for the validation, we can pass here validation data channel. Okay. So here you can see the instance count means number of Amazon EC2 instances to use for training. Instance type, number of epochs, number of models. So number of models to train in parallel. If not set, the number of parallel models to train will be decided by the algorithm itself. One, one model will be trained according to given training parameter and rest by close by the parameters. Loss function, so loss function depends on the predictor type. 
So there are many hyperparameters that we can set. Okay, so it will take some time. So let's see about this algorithm. How, let's see how this works. So first we have to uh, pre-process the data, then we can train the model, and then we can validate the model using some test data. If you want to see some examples here, so model tuning, high parameters. Okay, here we want to see some examples. Okay, linear learner sample notebooks. So here we have some examples also. Let's open this one and introduction with Amnest data set. So Amnest is a classification data set. Okay, this is a classification data set. So if we have CSV file, so we have to set the first column as the target column. Okay, and if we use another option, uh, which is uh, convert the data into this format, record IO wrapped root above. Okay, so here, this is how we can convert our input data into, uh, into this format. Okay. And then after we can upload it uh, uh, into the S3 bucket. And here you can see we can just retrieve the Docker image of our model. And this is the estimator, right? Container, role, instance count, instance type, output path, CH maker, session. Then we can set the hyperparameters. We can pass the number of features. So in our case, the number of features, I think we have typed in. Oh, you can check how many features we have. We have 14 columns and one target column. Means we have number of features starting here. So we can also pass here thirteen. Here we can also pass number of features equal to thirteen. Okay, and at the end, this is very important step. We have to delete the endpoint. Right? If we are ready to be done with this notebook, please run this delete endpoint. Means we have to delete the endpoint. Otherwise, we have to pay some extra charge. Right? So this is very important step here. The training image download completed. Training in progress. So as you increase the number of epochs, it will take more time. While training. Okay. Next, uh, we will deploy a model, means we will create an endpoint, right? And this endpoint we can use for inference. So in, the, in, uh, so in the future, if you want to make some prediction on the test data, we can use the endpoint. Okay. Or the endpoint we can also use if we uh, if we are getting our input data in the form of HTTP request, right? HTTP post request. So uh, in that case, we can also use the endpoint. Here you can see uh, training job completed. Okay, next uh, we can create the endpoint. So here uh, I'm going to set the endpoint name first. So this is our end. So this will be our endpoint name. And let's deploy our model. So linear.deploy. So initial instance count one. And this is the instance type for the inference. ML4.xlarge. Right? So this is the same that we have taken while training. After that, uh, we will okay. After that, we will uh, set some hyperparameters into our model, like a uh, uh, serializer equal to CSV serializer and uh, deserializer equal to JSON underscore uh, deserializer means uh, we will get the prediction into this format JSON form. Then after we need some data for the testing, so here we can use our validation data and we can just drop the target column, right? And rest of the columns we can store in the form of array. Right? And then such excess data we can pass here into the method predict. So here we will get the output in the form of JSON. 
and here uh, then uh, we, uh, we will convert our test data means our JSON data into form of array right okay and then after we will also get our actual output right okay and this is a regression problem so we will find here r2 score or we can also find a mean squared error right to check the model performance on the test data and at the end we will delete the endpoint so this is a very important step you must delete the endpoint when you are done to avoid a costly surprise later so our endpoint will be saved here we want to see where endpoint will be saved so endpoint will be saved here in the inference here endpoints you can see this endpoint linear origin model the state creation time you can see status is creating right so in future if you want to reuse your trained model right so you can just use this endpoint it will take some time you can see here creating endpoint with name linear origin model and here you can see while inference you can use instance type m4.xlarge or m5.xlarge instance right so there are 125 hours i think three on these two instances per month on inference okay and 50 hours per month on uh, m4.xlar or m5.xlar instance on training inference format and see here okay so uh, inference format uh, will be like this json format right prediction score predictive label in the case of multi-class classification our for our inference format will be like this one predictions score we are getting the score corresponding to each class right and, and our uh, predicted label is uh, class 2 0 1 and 2 in the case of regression we will get our inference output into this format okay now let's uh, set the input format and output format of the inference model here you can see we are getting our data into a form of dictionary right or we can say our json format okay next we will convert our data into, into a form of array next we will uh, now here we need some test data means uh, actual output so actual output we have into this column median value right and then here we are trying to find the r2 score so r2 score is the scoring method that we can that we can use for regression so we are getting a 0.74 right so if you want to improve this score you can just uh, change the number of epoch batch size right or uh, optimization algorithms learning rate right so there are many hyperparameters right uh, that you can uh, change to improve this score and the mean squared error is 14.86 and next you can see currently we have here this endpoint right we have this endpoint and the status you can see in service and here you will find uh, detailed information about this endpoint that is the name status type right url right so okay we have this endpoint uh, that we have just created for our trained model now we want to just delete this the first option we have this one right so linear regression dot delete model and linear regression or delete endpoint now if we refresh this page let's see what will happen you can see there are no correctly there are currently no resources means now there is no endpoint right so this is how we can delete our endpoint for our trained model here in the models you can also see 
there are currently no resources. So this is how we can use uh, uh, we can use a linear learner algorithm for regression. Okay, and in the next class we will see how to solve a classification problem using the same algorithm linear learner. Okay, guys. So let's wind up this class and let's meet in the next session. Thank you.